Hi there, everybody. Um, I've gotten a couple of requests about um, doing paint markings on horses, and I thought I'd go ahead and start uh, showing you guys what to do with your acrylics and so forth. Um, I can't find my tripod, so you're going to have to bear with me on uh, the just general, like, dealing with camera angles. Um, so this is a Arabian Resin Stallion. He is a limit to 50 pieces, and he was purchased off of Modern Horse Sales page uh, as a blank, and um, he was unprepped and nothing done with him. He was just bought and then stuffed in a closet, apparently, so... Um, but originally he was just a plain old chestnut, and I decided to give him some paint markings. So you can see here, I've started to work on my paint markings with him. And this is only, I believe, his fourth layer. So it takes quite a while. A couple things you need to know is that when working with acrylic, if you're not experienced, I wouldn't recommend going to Walmart and buying the cheap acrylic that they sell there for anywhere from $1.50 to $3. It's not the best acrylic to be working with if you're a beginner. The reason being is, is that it is a little bit more coarse than some of the other acrylics if you purchase them at an art store. Um, so if you're a beginner, I'd recommend going a little bit more expensive on just some basic colors such as white. That's one of your basic colors. So, you know, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but overall it's better quality paint. Um, so, yeah. But um, anyways, with working with acrylic, you just don't take it directly straight out of the bottle. Okay? You don't do that. What you do is you take a small amount of acrylics and you put it in a dish and you mix water with your acrylics. Now what you want it to look like is more of like milk. It can be a little bit more on the thick side especially if you have more experience um, with working with acrylic but if you're a beginner about milk, milk consistency is just about right. Um, and if it's too thick then you won't be able to get it spread out and it'll be a lot of grain. It'll have a grainy effect to it. Um, the whole idea of watering it down is to make it so it's less grainy. Because if it comes directly out of that, it's going to be very grainy. So with adding water, less grainy. Um, a couple things that you need to remember is that after you do one coat, you need to let the horse dry from anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes depending on your acrylic and your weather conditions. Then once that is completed, then go ahead and spray your horse with matte finish. Let him dry for about half an hour. Then add another coat and continue on and keep going, keep going, keep going until you have a nice um, thick, or not really thick, but a nice uh, white. You can see here on his face, he's just about covered. Um, but there's areas on his backside here. You can see right there where it needs to have more paint, so forth. And I know you can't see it quite so well, but there's some areas that need more coats. Um, don't rush this step, guys. I know that a lot of people, when they ask me about painting models, they say, how long does it take to paint a paint horse? Let me tell you. Something like this takes anywhere from without including the base, just like the main body color of the horse, just the paint markings, anywhere from three to six months, depending on the color. So, you know, if I have a lot of uh, herring and other things that I have to do on the model, of course it's gonna take me twice as long to get it done. Um, so yes, it does take quite a while to do this. And then, of course, after several layers of painting, you're going to want to let your, dry, your horse to dry for about 24 hours, a full day, and just to make sure that all the coats beneath it are 100% hardened. Now, the nice little trick about sealing your horse between every single layer is that if you make a mistake, you can rinse it off right away. So, you know, if you make a mistake, like let's say you go out of the lines, you know, and, and you're like, oh my god, you know, you can go to the sink, rinse it off, and hey, you're done. Um, now, that doesn't work generally with tight areas all the time, like little little creases like this. 
doesn't work very well. Um, but, you know, large areas, you will be able to rinse it off. And, of course, if it is still really wet, it'll just rinse right off. But if you have let it dry a little bit, then you're not going to get that off sometimes. But it depends. Depends. It does depend. I do say that right now. It does depend. Um, so, yeah. But, anyways, this is... This is um, what he's doing now. I do use a very large, extensive brush collection. I've got many, many, many different styles. I've got all different types of brushes. Now this is just basic brushes. I've got way more than this. I'm gonna pull out a couple here that I use regularly, um, just to show you guys a couple of brushes. Now, you can go to your local art store. Now, an art store is different from a craft store, guys. An art store is a store that only sells like paints and primer and pastels. They don't sell fabric and uh, flowers, miscellaneous things, yarn. Art stores are mostly just basic art supplies, paint, pastels, um, airbrush paints, paint brushes, um, oil paints, stuff like that. Um, pens, pencils, so. But anyways, um, they, at Walmart, they do sell a set of paint brushes like this. Um, the reason why I have some cheaper brushes is, is because my local art store has decided to raise their prices extensively. They've moved to a new facility and they apparently they think that they're all high and mighty. And it's the only art store we have in town. So for a basic paintbrush, let's just say this one here, which is a flat. This is a two flat square brush. But anyway, something like this at the local art store would cost me about $12. Yeah. I can buy all of these, well actually more than this, probably about 12 different brushes for about $6. Um, but of course, I do need to replace them uh, like quite a bit actually because these brushes just don't handle well to being you know mangled and painted all the time with so after several months I replace them all so yes um, now a couple of things let me put this down here you can look at his leg or whatever his chest um, so what you're gonna want to do Oh, let me see here. Where's my other little brush? I have another brush around here somewhere. Oh gosh, where'd it go? Oh, do, 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 do. That's not it. That is not it. Oh, here it is. Okay. This is another little brush I have. Whoop. As you can see, it's very tiny. This is a 10 over 0 little brush. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take some acrylic. Come over here. Whoop, that is a little bit too much. Way too much. You don't need that much. Way, 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 way too much. But anyways, I usually have two brushes. I have a large brush like this. Take some of the water, come over here, mix it up. Now, because I've been painting horses for quite a while, I can tell the consistency right away of how it's going to look and feel. So, but you're, if you're a beginner, I do recommend actually having a cup of milk beside you. And you can pour it into another bowl to see the type of consistency. But, you know, I've been working with acrylics for quite a while, so I'm able to tell the, the consistency right away. Okay, so, um, I'm going to have to hold this very weird or something or try to figure this out. Okay, hold on guys, let me, let me do this. This might work a little bit better. Okay. Whoop. Sorry guys, I know this is weird, but I can't find my tripod. Okay, so here's his face, right? All right, so what we want to do, let me back this up a little bit. So what we want to do is, oh, this is weird painting like this. Um, let me see here, hold on. I'm trying to angle this correctly so I can paint and show you guys the thing. Oh, this is better. This is better. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to add very thin layers to the model. And we want to evenly spread this out. Now see how I got a little bit right there? Usually I can just wipe it away because it's so thin. But uh, if it's too thick, you're going to have a harder time. 
with that. And of course, you know, with smaller areas, I will go to a smaller brush. But this is a pretty large area, so I'm just going to stick with this brush for now. So, of course, you know, I'm spreading this around real good, getting it all around. You don't want to leave it in just one area and let it clump. Bad idea. Don't do it. Um, acrylics are a pain in the butt to deal with when they are, like, not good anymore, meaning, um, like, let's say that you bought some acrylics about two years ago, right? Okay. Acrylics have a shelf life. Even though a lot of people say they don't, they indeed do. All right. The older the acrylic, the less quality work you'll have. Acrylics do get very, very, very grainy as they get older. It's a pain in the butt to deal with. Um, another thing is, is that if you decide that you don't like, you know, a certain color or something and you used acrylics to paint it, um, it's not a good idea to spray it until you have decided um, if that's your color you're going to stay with. The reason why is because if you spray this, like let's say after it's dried and you spray it with your matte finish, it's going to be twice as hard to sand it down smooth enough to reprime it and start over again. Now, let's say that you wanted to paint this model all the way white, okay, with acrylics. You use the same method, okay? Prime your horse, use very thin down water acrylic, just do a small area at a time. Make sure that also um, when you're doing like let's say that you have to stop for a couple of hours, make sure the edges are flared, meaning that it's not just a straight edge, it's all fluffy kind of, you know, um, and so forth, because this will allow you to put another layer next to it when you continue on finishing painting the horse and you won't have this strange looking uh, layer there from the next color or whatever you're going to do if you want to continue on or however it may be. So, you can see I've started to do that, and of course this will take, you know, roughly about 20 to 25 minutes to dry, depending. Um, so let's go ahead and let's start working down here, alright? So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start working over here, filling this in, working my paint up. Get my paint all through the edges. Make sure you do spread it out quite a bit because with watered down acrylics, um, if it's too watery, it will leave a very weird edge to it and then you'd have to sand that edge down and you're going to be dealing with a lot of problems on that department. So, you know, of course, make sure that uh, you do get it smoothed around so that it's not just a giant puddly mess somewhere. Sorry for my terms, I don't know what I'm talking about, truly. <laughs> no, I do, it's just that I'm tired, so just bear with me, guys. Okay, I'm mixing up some more paint over here and my plate is moving around and it won't stir. Okay, so. Now you also don't want to load your brush up with too much paint um, because it will dry at the top of your brush and once your paint dries at the top of your brush it's going to be really, 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 really hard to get off. Getting acrylic paint off a brush is a pain in the butt. Yes it is. So now I've switched to a smaller brush, that uh, 10 over 0 brush, because now I'm going into a little bit more detailed area of the horse. And that is basically what I do for the entire model, including all spots. Um, and detailed work. Mapping is basically very simple. Mapping is just watered down acrylics 
that you just go over the edge of the markings and you spread it out real thin, okay? Um, and it's not super hard to do, but I don't recommend beginners to start dealing with mapping. I recommend just trying to get your markings smooth and 100% perfect before even considering trying to work with mapping. Mapping can also be very hard if you're not used to it. So make sure to take your time and don't rush things. Okay guys, I'll see you later. Got any questions? Let me know.